Hey guys, today's dandy family car is 2023, the Toyota new Prius. Hi there, I'm Campac Daddy, who's been absent for a while. I've been waiting for this. I'm sure many of you have already bought it. The design is completely reformed. It almost looked like a four-door coupe, right? Um, it's unexpectedly cool. Honestly, I used to dislike the Prius, but this is the first one that really love it. The body size is 4,600 mm in length, 1780 in width, and 1430 in height. There are eight colors available, diverse color palette. The one we have today is the Z grade, a front wheel drive hybrid. Now let's take a look at the exterior. They seem to have focused more on design rather than just fuel efficiency this time. Look at the angle of the A pillar. Everyone talks about this, right? But in reality, the front windshield's angle isn't as steep as the A pillar. The emphasis on the pillar angle was to prioritize continuity with the bonnet line. A longer A pillar has a significant impact on vertical rigidity, so I'm looking forward to the ride comfort. The 19 inch wheels look like this. With Yokohama tires, Blue Earth GT 195-50R19. My two personal favorite design points. First, the round shape of the tire housing. It's not 180 degree, but more like 210 degree, right? This emphasizes aerodynamics and enhances the sporty impression with a lower vehicle height. It's seriously cool, don't you think? But on the flip side, because of this shape, the center of the circle is inevitably determined, which poses a dilemma when you want to lower the vehicle height without making it look tacky. So what will you do? The second point is the crease on the body's undersurface. Lately, the trend is to create a narrowed design on the side of the body, which is a hassle for press design, considering the bulging and deformation. However, with this line, they achieve shadows with just one press line, effectively expressing the narrowed body and the presence of the rear end. Why didn't anyone think of this before? Who came up with this? It's amazing. Please sign my autograph. By the way, I think the chief designer changed this time, right? We've seen Harrier, Sienta, Aqua, and Noah, and the design approach is totally different this time. Now let's focus on the front. The front design is also well done. It reminds me of the retractable ones like the Ferrari Prosangue. Wait, did Prosangue copy the Prius? Oh no, what are you talking about? Stop! Ignore that! The eyes are blacked out, and the inverse slant nose makes it look like there are no headlights when viewed from above. As with the press lines we discussed earlier, the design pays attention to viewing angles. It uses bi-beam LED headlights, which allow for low and high beam switching with a single light source. I forgot to check the engine compartment. Ha ha, my bad. Sorry about that. The powertrain lineup consists of three options. Two, 0L hybrid, one, 8L hybrid, and PHEV. The driving options are either FF or E4. The grades available are Z, G, U for Kinto, and X for corporate use. The suspension system consists of struts at the front and double wishbone at the rear. I'll talk more about the ride comfort in the test drive section. Now let's talk about the rear. The horizontal taillights are iconic and give it a futuristic feel. It looks cool, like a Dodge Charger. Oh, they've paid attention to the fine details too. These are the points that make you happy when you gaze at them closely during car washes. Oh, the press here is amazing. I can't believe the metal sheet didn't tear. Ah, you can understand how difficult it was with these wavy lines. A big round of applause to the designers and the press department for their hard work. Here's the illuminated pattern for the taillights. The luggage compartment has an electric tailgate. Oh my, Prius, you've grown up so much, you're already electric. Oops, I just got a tone like a relative's auntie. The capacity is 410L. Not bad, not excellent. Considering this shape, they've done quite a lot. The rear seats can be folded in a 4-6 ratio. The storage space under the luggage compartment, well, it doesn't hold much when you put the jack and other stuff in it. All right, it's time for our usual dandy check from a parenting perspective. Oops, I forgot to bring the baby stroller. It's been a while since I've done a shoot, and I'm a bit out of practice. 
I measured it with a measuring tape, and it's about 80 cm deep and 110-115 cm wide. With these dimensions, a basic size A-type stroller can't be stored vertically. It can only be stored horizontally. After shopping with the baby, where do you put the folded stroller? Oh wait, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's a deal breaker. This channel is all about, you can still handle parenting, right? Right? So please understand, mademoiselle. All right, let's head to the rear seats. The side garnish is in matte finish resin. I wonder why they couldn't make it glossy black. The door handles are electronic switch type, not mechanical, so they ensure there's enough space for small windows. It improves the rear visibility. The door trim, except for the elbow rest, is made of hard plastic, but it looks neat and modern without being too luxurious or cheap, making it a universally appealing design. Now, onto the rear seats. Let's get in. Despite its coupe style, the knee room is quite spacious. However, due to the coupe style, the seat height is low and the foot space is very narrow. There's only enough headroom for about the size of your palm. There's no denying the lack of openness. Well, that's just how this car is, so it can't be helped. Behind the center console, there's an AC100 power outlet, which is convenient. The rear doors have child locks, ISO fix fixtures, and assist grips to hang toys. The armrest has cup holders, and the milk bottle fits without falling over. The room lamp has a separate switch, so you can even make formula milk inside the car at night. As always, let's try putting in a child seat. The low roof makes it possible to put it in, but honestly, it's not the easiest task. From this, you can tell that the target audience is likely slightly older. Frankly, they seem to have given up on families with young children. Now here's the interior panorama from the rear seats. To be honest, in terms of material, it may not be considered luxurious. However, the design is sleek, modern, and futuristic, showing that you can create a cool look even without using genuine leather. The trendy ambient lights are stylish and add a sense of luxury while driving. Wait, are these standard equipment? They nailed it. Now, moving on to some tidbits. This Prius is the fifth generation, and I boldly predict that this will be the final model. Well, I don't really know. But during the planning stage of this Prius, President Akio Toyota suggested, isn't it enough to make the Prius exclusively for taxis? However, the development team insisted on creating an entirely new Prius as a passenger car. From President Toyota's statement, you can tell that now that fuel-efficient hybrids have become prevalent in all cars, the Prius needed to evolve into a new character to avoid becoming monotonous. As a result, they significantly increased the sporty feel compared to the previous generation. However, while it's great to have both eco-friendliness and sportiness now, what do you think will happen if it undergoes further character changes? Yes, it won't be the Prius anymore. Moreover, with the challenging era of electric vehicles ahead, the character of Prius, which represented eco-friendliness and hybrids, will unfortunately be retired. Getting approval for a Prius that is so focused on coolness with a coupe form that requires adding a rear spoiler and 19-inch tires that should reduce fuel efficiency might be because it's the final model and they wanted to give it their all and go all out. It seems like there's a strong feeling of do it all you can because this is the last one. That's how I feel about it. Next, let's move on to checking the front seats. The door trim is... Oh, wow. The upper part is a firmer soft pad, while the elbow rest is pleasantly soft. It's a combination of synthetic leather and hard plastic, so it doesn't have a stunning sense of luxury. But the design is high quality, and there's no sense of disappointment. Yeah, I like it. The whole scene is like this. Now let's get inside. The first thing that catches your eye is the speedometer and steering design. It's slightly different from the BZ4X, but almost the same. It's an interesting spatial design, but the monitor is small, and there's no real benefit to this space, to be honest. It's like a dead space. It would have been nice to have some kind of usage, like a small storage behind the meter, like the Sienta. The steering is wrapped in genuine leather, and it feels smooth and comfortable. In recent years, the trend is for thinner spoke steering wheels, so it gives a somewhat old-fashioned impression. Maybe they intentionally went for a first-generation vibe. 
The seat position is electric, and the pedals are organ style. Ah, it's not a pseudo-organ anymore. The tilt telescopic steering column is at the center of the body. This is the view from the driver's seat towards the rear. Thanks to the quarter window, you can see quite well. I thought the forward visibility would be bad due to the sleeping A-pillar, but the glass has come closer to the driver, which actually improves the visibility. This is a pleasant surprise. This is how it should be. The center console has a large 12.3-inch center display, hazard button, air conditioning unit, and piano-like switch similar to Mazda. This design saves space and is easy to press. There are seat heaters and ventilation buttons too. Below, there are USB ports and a 12V cigarette lighter socket. The two-tier structure of the small item tray is neat and tidy. It's a satisfying design for those who don't like clutter. And the cup holders placed sideways are a nice touch. The electronic shift knob, mode switch, electric parking brake, and brake hold button are there. The non-contact charging uses a vertical slot. It's very clean and user-friendly. However, people who put on a super large smartphone or a unique phone cover might not like this because it won't fit. There's a good reason for this design, but since time is running short, I'll explain it in the test drive section later. When you open the elbow rest, there's a storage space with Type-C sockets. Overhead, there's an anti-glare mirror. The digital inner mirror is probably an option. The SOS call button, map lamp. No, just a lamp. Just a regular lamp. Since we no longer use paper maps, they made a decisive design change. This is the first attempt at something plain, right? With the times, they finally made the decision. No sunglasses holder. Why Japanese people? As the pillar angle would require sunglasses. The glass roof cover is manual, but it's very nice. It greatly enhances the sense of openness. So, how was that 2023 the Toyota new Prius exterior and interior chapter? Finally, the Prius looks cool. I'm sorry to those who own the previous generation model. Personally, I've never found the previous Prius designs cool. I'm more of a fan of the 70s Supra, but this time, I genuinely think it looks cool. It really surprised me. What generation do you like the most? Please let me know in the comments. So, next time we're looking forward to the exciting test drive chapter. With this new Prius having a somewhat different vibe, what kind of family car will it become? Please subscribe to the channel and wait for the next video. Even if you become a dad, please ride that you think will be cool. Car, now to daddies and mommies around the world. Good job today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.